Hey, what is up guys? My name is Mario and on this video we're gonna find out if the Gear Fit 2 is still worth in 2018. I do want to point out that one of the things that makes the Gear Fit 2 worth in 2018, it is that it's still a very stylish Gear Fit tracker. Even if you're not using all the fitness features, using this watch will make you look stylish and techy. You can customize it by changing the watch face, and if you want, you can spend a little bit extra money on additional band straps. It is also lightweight and comfortable to wear. The gear offers a variety of features that allow you to track your fitness level, your liquid intake, listen to music, and even keeping up with the weather. Many people have reported that it's not always accurate, but it does an okay job keeping up in track of your fitness goals and results if you're still okay manually entering most of the information. It does have a poor selection of applications. Many of the applications from the Galaxy App Store crash frequently and impact the battery life on the gear. You can still find some of the apps and features that come handy. The apps that come already pre-installed on the watch work well, and I never have any issues with them. Getting notifications on the gear when I get an email or a text message is a big plus for me. Even though I'm not able to fully respond to text messages, there is a feature that allows me to pre-program custom messages and I can send it with the press of a screen. Samsung does continue to support the watch with security and app updates, but don't expect anything exciting that will blow your mind. All the updates tend to be minor and don't change much of the user experience. I do have to be honest with you, I tried committing using the Gear Fit 2 throughout 2017 and I just fell miserably. In reality, the watch was lost in a drawer for many months. The battery life is expected to last up to three days, but in reality, you will only get between 24 hours and 48 hours, depending on the settings you have on the watch and how much usability you're getting out of it. In my opinion, if you're getting up to three days of battery life, you're really not getting the most out of the features. I mean, it is easy to charge the watch with the charging dock station, but it is even easier to forget and no one wants to wear the watch when it's fully out of battery. For me, it was difficult keeping it charged at all times and I just start forgetting to wear it at some point. Many of the features on the watch require the user to enter the data manually, making it easy to forget. You should also know how easy it is to forget about the goals when you stop keeping track of them. Keep in mind that the watch does come with some baggage that it acquired in 2017, like poor battery performance while running some of the features, a not so accurate fitness tracking record, and most popular, which is the poor design on the band strap. Like I already mentioned in 2017, I did try committing using the watch and all its features. I was able to use it constantly for about a month, I really like the inactive time feature that will remind me to get up and walk around when I was sitting in a chair for long periods of time. Also, I enjoy entering my liquid intakes like water and coffee, but quickly realized that it was not realistic to do it all the time. The heart rate, the floor count, and the exercise features were also somewhat of a disappointment for me. I tried importing music and using it as an mp3 player at the gym, but quickly found out that the watch would get on the way of certain workouts, and it was easier for the watch straps to come off. If I didn't own the Gear Fit 2 in 2018, will I still be interested in getting one? Well, if I could find one for under $100, I would definitely get one, just because it's stylish and it does offer some of the functionality that I find helpful. But if I was looking for a fitness tracker to achieve my fitness goals in 2018, I would definitely pass on it as I feel that it did not serve the purpose for me in 2017, and not just because it was not always accurate. It was mainly because it would still require the manual input of some of the data to ensure I was keeping track of my fitness goals and results. I mean, who wants to punch in the options every time you're going to get on a machine at the gym or punch in a number every time you drink a glass of water? Even worse, having a heart rate tracker that is not always consistent. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your comments, questions, or if you have your own experience on the Gear Fit 2, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing to this channel for a weekly tech video, and I'll see you on the next one.